As Harun Yeya noted, I always wonder why birds stay in the same place when they can fly anywhere on earth. And then I ask myself the same question. As Mark Twain put it, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. And that's where people get stuck. You're literally like the bird. You could fly anywhere you want. You can go anywhere you want to go. And look, I know you've got a litany of excuses and all of them are valid. You've got a job you can't just leave or you don't have a job and you don't have the money. Your family is in one place. It's the only thing that you've ever known. You only speak one language. You've never traveled before. You don't have a passport. You can't afford the gas money. There are a thousand real reasons not to go. But the truth is that none of them matter. The truth is if you want to build something in your life that you have to remember what Mark Twain said, you have to get started because at the end of the day, that is literally the only thing that's holding you back. You're not moving. And once you get the simplicity of that, once you understand that you could act right now, you could say fuck all the excuses. You could stop making them. You could stop giving in to them no matter how valid they are, no matter how real they may seem, you can finally decide that you're going to get up and move, that you're going to create that momentum, that you're going to take a step, that you're going to make the demand, that you create momentum, that you get something done, that you fucking find an answer, or as Hannibal said, that you're going to find a way or make one. If you have to carve through fucking rock, do it, because humans before you have done it. And that's the simple truth. That is the simple fucking truth. And everything else is bullshit. Everything else is the weak voice in your mind holding you back and making you a less version of yourself. So I ask you, why doesn't the bird fly wherever it wants to go? Because that's all it's known? Because that's what's safe? Because that's what's comfortable? Or because it's an animal? What do you want to be? If this isn't the life you want to live, do something about it. As Albert Einstein said, try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. This is something that I think about a lot. At the end of the day, success is incredibly motivating and accomplishing your goals and your dreams is something that I wanted to do since I was a little kid. That's been a driving force in my life. But through all of that, the times that I've felt happiest, the times that I've felt most secure, the times that my anxiety and my stress have been at zero, are the times where I felt like I was being most true to myself, where I was trying to really become a person of substance. I wasn't looking for something extrinsic. I was focused inward and trying to develop the person that I'm becoming, that I had some code that I was living by, that I was really deciding not just what outwardly success looks like, but what does it mean to be a good person? What does it mean to be an effective person? What does it mean to be worthy of trust? And those things at the end of the day, those things are something that when you invest in finding value in that, that it takes you somewhere amazing. And as Bruce Lee said, knowledge will give you power, but character will give you respect. And at the end of the day, I really can't think of anything better than that. I can't think of anything that will keep me company when I'm alone, when there's nothing but silence around, when all I can hear are the sounds of my own thoughts. The only thing that is going to bring me or you comfort is respect, is self-love, is knowing who you are really and knowing that you're true to that even when nobody's looking. And that concept, that notion of having a guiding light, a principle, something by which you steer by, that you are always true to, and that in your moments of stress, chaos, confusion, of desire, that in your moments of deepest desire, that you're still true to that, that all you think about is that North Star of being that person that you want to be, when you let that be your guiding light, when you stay true to that, nothing can hurt you because nothing will be able to make you feel badly about yourself because once you know who you are and you're true to it nothing else matters as Walt Disney said if you can dream it you can do it now what makes me laugh is I know right now some of the people listening to that they say that's bullshit they're just limits to what humans can do. And I get that response, I understand it. I used to respond to everything like that. I used to see 
only the difficulty. I used to see only the ways in which it couldn't work out. And I couldn't see, I was literally blinded by fear. I was blinded by some bizarre sense of pride that wanted to justify my limited existence, that didn't want to have to face that I could be doing more, that I could be more, that my life was somehow less than what it could be. And so I would laugh at quotes like that. And I know right now of the chills, I know right now there are people that are laughing at that and all they can think about are the limits. All they can think about are the things that prove him wrong. And guess what? He is wrong. There really are limits. But if you fucking waste your time focused on that, you're never going to create the momentum that you need to actually make something come true in your life. You can build virtually anything, but if you get hung up on the fucking virtual part, if you let that stop you, if you immediately go to the things that ultimately limit you and hold you back, that is where you're gonna stay forever. Because if you argue for your limitations, guess what, my friend? They become yours. And congratulations, you now get to live in that box. You get to live in that self-defined prison. But if, like Teddy Roosevelt said, instead of that, you keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground, and you don't act like somebody who can't see that sure, there are limits, there are edges to this universe, but you're looking not at that. You're looking at how do you really execute you're dreaming big and you're remembering that your feet ultimately is that contact point. It is where the rubber meets the road. It is that moment of doing. And so if instead of rejecting it because your feet must stay planted on the ground, remember that in keeping your feet on the ground, that's the moment of action. That's the moment of doing something about it. That's the moment of seeing the fucking possibilities and then moving doing something, making it real. So right now, give up on those weird mental mechanisms that make you actually want to fight for the things that aren't possible, to get people to believe in it, to get people to understand why you've chosen to stand still. Instead of that, convince yourself that you should be moving and go do what you know you're destined to do. Here's the hard truth about getting great. It takes time and dedication. It takes a willingness to accept that you're not yet good enough. It takes the ability to stare at the places that you know that you're weak, to really look at those things and not let it affect your sense of self-esteem and not let it affect your sense of self-worth so that you can still get the momentum going. But you have to understand that in the beginning, we're all terrible. And as Henri Cartier-Bresson said, your first 10,000 photographs are your worst. And so the thing that really makes great art are the people that continue to push and the people that continue to work and face how inadequate they are and really understand that at the end of the day, greatness is a craft. Greatness is a process. Greatness is a habit. Greatness is the little things that you do every day, over time, going out every day, unafraid of whether or not this is one of the 10,000 terrible things that you're gonna do. It's being unafraid to make those mistakes. It's being unafraid that you're not yet great. And as Marianne Radmaker said, courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. And that's it. If you wanna be great, that's what you have to do. You've gotta get up again tomorrow. You've gotta to be willing to face another day. You've gotta be willing to accept that you've gotta get through the bad ideas before you can get to the good. You've gotta understand that you have to start as an apprentice. You have to start as a person going and getting tea and you have to accept that that's the job that you should be playing, that you should be working for somebody else, you should be looking up to somebody else and seeing what they can teach you because what you know is that you're there to learn. What you know is that you're there to get through the 10,000 bad photographs that you need to get through to ultimately achieve greatness. And if you make the catastrophic error that so many make to try to tell the world that you're extraordinary today, to try to get the world to follow you and look up to you and think that you're something today. Because the people that really win are the ones that invest today. 
the ones that listen today, the ones that spend every ounce of their energy amassing mastery, getting better every day, working their asses off to improve their skill set, to relentlessly look at the things that they're not doing well, to understand that they have to break themselves down and get rid of all of their ego before they can really find greatness. Those are the people that we remember. So if you want to be remembered, if you want to achieve real greatness, you just need to have the courage to show up every day and take another swing, take another photo, try another task, do something that scares you, and do those little things over and over and over until you win. Greatness is the most demanding mistress you're ever going to encounter. And I understand the advice that I'm about to give you is not for everyone. Most people should turn this off. But if you're gonna stick with me, if you're going to listen to what I have to say, it's because you want something tremendous in your life. You wanna stand out from everyone else. You wanna do something more than other people think is possible. You literally want to stand outside the norm. And if that's the case for you, then understand that as Albert Einstein said, only one who devotes himself to a cause with his whole strength and soul can be a true master. For this reason, mastery demands all of a person. If you want to get great, if you really want to make a skill set your own, if you want to be able to do something, and at the end of the day, if you want to transform the world, if you want to make grand changes, if you want to do all of that shit, all the empty words that people spout all the time, let me tell you, the only thing that's going to separate you from all the other blowhards who are just talking words and will never do anything is to give yourself over completely, to let that obsession, let that thing that you love completely consume you. And in that, your only chance to really become great lies. As Franz Kafka said, don't bend. Don't water down. Don't try to make it logical. Rather, follow your most intense obsessions mercilessly. Can you do that? Can you become mercilessly obsessed? Can you let something occupy you to where all logic and reason is gone out the window and the only thing that matters is whether or not you accomplish? Will you hold yourself accountable to metrics? Will you look at the world and see Am I actually making change? Are you prepared to hold yourself to that standard? Because if you are, there is nothing you can't fucking do. If you're willing to take that responsibility on to transform yourself as a human being, if you give yourself over to getting great, if you give yourself over to that obsession, if you feed it like you would feed a beast, if you feed it like you would feed a fire that can wipe out an entire mountainside, then you've got a chance. But it's got to burn within you like that. You've got to feed it like that. You've got to feed it skills. You've got to get better every day. You've got to constantly wake up and understand exactly what it is that you're building towards that and build towards it with a relentlessness that other people think is mania, that other people can see only madness in what you do. And if you can push yourself to that level, then the world will bend to your will. As Naval Ravikant said, the only way to truly learn something is by doing it. Yes, listen to guidance, but don't wait. That is such a powerful idea. And I know right now you're listening to this because you want motivation. You want to be inspired. But my greatest fucking fear is that you'll get motivated, you'll get inspired, and that'll just be a declining arc for a few minutes after you listen to this video that ends with you doing nothing. And what I want, what I really hope for, and the reason that I give myself over to making these so completely, is I know some percentage of you on the other side of this will ultimately be prepared to take that first step. You will realize that the only thing that matters is action, and you will take that action. And it's in that action that your potential greatness 
waits. And as Martin Luther King said, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. You've just got to believe that you can learn. You don't have to believe that you're already capable of doing what you want. You don't have to believe that you can already build that thing that you dream. You don't have to believe that you already are extraordinary. You simply have to believe that if you take that first step, you put yourself on a journey not of execution, you put yourself on a journey of learning so that you can execute. And that, when you understand that difference, that's when you really will be on that path to greatness. And that is the thing that I want for everybody listening to this. Please understand the only thing you need to know is that you have to take the first step. Whatever the vision is that you have for your life, you absolutely can make it come true. And the process is very simple. The process is about learning. The process is about growing and getting better. It's about recognizing what you're not good at. It's about recognizing what you have to learn. It's about taking that first step on faith. On faith that you can get better. Not on faith that you're great. On faith that you can become the greatest of all time. And once you have that faith, once you know that simply being a human being puts you in this rare category of creature that can get better through pressure, through pain, through difficulty, through failure, those are the things that are gonna be the building blocks of your success. But in order to begin on that road, in order to have your first glorious failure, you must first take that first step. So please, don't waste your time being motivated or inspired. Spend every second of your time moving forward. That's how you're going to get where you want to go. As Daniel Pink said, people fail to achieve mastery not because they aren't talented, but because they aren't disciplined. The wonderful news about the human condition is you can get good at anything that you set your mind to. It's just not gonna be easy, and it's not gonna be fast. But the willingness to put in that work is what's going to separate you from everybody else, and I'm begging you to see yourself right now, today, as average, as no better than anyone else. But I beg you, with more force, then I know how to convey with this language to see yourself as malleable, to see yourself as capable of becoming anything you want to become, to become truly extraordinary. If you can find within yourself the discipline to stick with it long enough. And as Steve Martin said, perseverance is a great substitute for talent. Everybody wants to talk about who's talented. Everybody looks at the person with innate talent as if they have something magical. But to me, it's a gift, it's a handout, it's a freebie, it hasn't been earned. And no matter what it is, it's only the beginning. Even somebody that has talent, even if you get an early win, if you let somebody outwork you, if you let somebody who has more perseverance, more grit than you, then they are going to outperform you on a long enough timeline. The only thing I can guarantee is you will be outworked by somebody unless you pour your heart and soul into getting great. If you don't take days off, if you put yourself into it as if your life depended on it, when you act like that, then you've got a chance to be great. And as Robert Horry said, pressure can bust pipes, but it can also make diamonds. You've got to want that pressure. You've got to want things to be hard. You can't seek out the easy life. You can't just hope and pray that you can uncover inside of you some talent that's laid dormant that you didn't know about that's going to let things be easy for you. Don't want the easy. Want the hard. Want the pressure. Want the thing that's going to turn you into something. Because when it's easy, you don't work for it. When it's easy, you don't push. When it's easy, you get surpassed by the person who has to give it their all, who's prepared to do blood, sweat, and tears in order to become that thing that they want to be so badly because they are so fucking angry that they were never given anything. And with that chip on their shoulder, they're determined to become anything that they set their mind to. So whether you have talent, whether you don't, the only thing that matters is will you persevere? Will you stick with it long enough to get great? As Thomas Edison said, 
Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is to always try one more time. I know there are gonna be a million times in your life where you want to give up, where you absolutely ache with the desire to quit, where nothing sits inside of your gut other than the certainty that you are going to fail, that you are not good enough to push forward. But that is to fundamentally misunderstand the nature of a failure. The nature of a failure is not to tell you who you are. The nature of a failure is to tell you a way that didn't work. It's to inform, it's to educate you, it's to test you, it's to be a gut check, to find out if you believe in yourself enough to push forward even when the world seems to be telling you not to. And as Brian Tracy said, Attempt the impossible in order to improve your work. Think about that for a second. Attempt the impossible just to get better, to try the things that you know are going to fail, things that the world is gonna tell you simply cannot be. But even if it violates the laws of physics, if there's something in that attempt that you're going to learn, you owe it to yourself. You have a fucking moral obligation to try. Because all of the people that will lie in your wake are the people that didn't try simply because they didn't believe that they could do it. You have to be willing to look at the world. You have to be willing to see things that you yourself think are impossible and try. Because in that you will stretch yourself. You have to be willing to look inward at the state of your current skill set and say, I'm going to play outside of that. I'm not going to play where it's safe. I'm going to play where it hurts. I'm going to play where I feel clumsy. I'm going to play only in the areas that make me feel stupid because in that I know that the way that the brain responds is through adaptation. But I have to stress myself. You can't ever lose sight of that. The only way that the human animal adapts is through stress. You have to be willing to break things in order to build something new. So if you wanna push the boundaries, if you wanna see just how far you can go, if you wanna succeed at the highest level, if you wanna play on a global scale, you have got to be willing to try the impossible because right now, the things that you need to do are impossible for you, but they won't remain that way forever. And as Aristotle said, Pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. This doesn't have to be a tale of always being terrified. Everybody, myself included, screaming at you, telling you that you need to go do something great. The part they're leaving out is why the fuck should you care? And you should care because it's the greatest joy. You should only listen to this if it's leading you down a path that makes you feel more alive, and that's the point. The point is to get in touch with something that makes you feel great, but not to let yourself starve or be stopped by a fear that you'll fail, by a fear that it can't be done. Have fun, have the guts to enjoy yourself, have the guts to go out and attempt something audacious and terrifying, knowing that all along, if you're doing it right, you're gonna have a good time. So all of this, going balls out, trying to prove something to yourself, trying to do something amazing, never lose sight that it's to build a better life. Never lose sight of the fact that you're doing it to create the person that you want to be. Never lose sight of the fact that it should be fun. As Kurt Vonnegut, one of the greatest authors in modern time said, when I write, I feel like an armless, legless man with a crayon in his mouth. But he still did it. And that's the kind of thing that you're gonna hear from the greats. You're not gonna hear that it was easy. You're not gonna hear that they felt suave and cool. Even the greatest of all time have that awkwardness, and that clumsiness. They're never quite as good as they want to be. But what I want you to understand is even though Kurt Vonnegut said those words, he wrote tons of books that changed people's lives, that changed the landscape of literature because despite the fact that he felt awkward and clumsy, he kept doing it and doing it and forcing himself to move forward, to take one step after another even when the process was not exactly rewarding. He believed in something. He knew that what he was trying to do would ultimately get better. He knew that if he wanted to accomplish something great, that he had to push through the awkwardness. And that is the very trick to getting great. You just have to do it. 
You have to go, you have to take that first step, you have to push, you have to drive, you have to strive every time to get a little bit better. You have to strive not to fall prey to your own doubts and insecurities. And as Joe Namath said, if you aren't going all the way, why go at all? But it's doing that in face of the fear. It's doing that in face of the difficulties. It isn't only because someone is great that they say you should either do it all the way to play hard or go home. They're not saying it because the process is in and of itself rewarding. They're saying it because there is something that they're trying to accomplish that demands it. That they're prepared to play on a world stage. And once you know why you're doing what you're doing, once something sits at the core of your being, and despite how difficult, painful, awkward it may be to push forward, you push forward no matter what the odds. And as Hannibal said, one of the greatest military leaders of all time, I will either find a way or I'll make one. And he said that as he was getting elephants across the Alps. Now when you think of the difficulties that you face in trying to do what you're trying to accomplish, think about that man amassing an army and getting elephants to climb a mountain and saying not, this is impossible, but rather, if there's not already a way present, I will make one. And when you can look at that, when you can look at your own inadequacies, when you can accept that you are not yet good enough, but you know that you'll put in the work to get there, you know that you'll learn the things that you need to learn, that you will push and you will practice and you will shape yourself into someone capable of doing it. And if you have to literally carve your own path out of the stone granite of a mountainside, you will do that because that's what your goals demand. And when you're prepared to do whatever your goals demand, you will accomplish whatever you set your mind to. As Ernest Hemingway noted, the world breaks everyone. And afterward, many are stronger in the broken places. But my question is, why isn't everyone? To me, it comes down to the strategies that you use. There really isn't anything objectively good or bad. There isn't anything that happens to you that can't be overcome. There isn't anything that could happen to you, anything that when you turn inward, you can't find a reason to overcome. You can't find a way to put those pieces back together. And that becomes your job. It becomes literally up to you whether you're going to sit and wallow and woe is me. Because what happened, happened. And there's no way to take it back. But how you respond, what you bring to that table, whether you meet fire with fire, whether you meet that adversity with falling apart, becoming weaker in the areas that broke, or you bind them and mend them, and it becomes like a weld that literally makes you stronger, is a choice. And it's a choice only you get to make. But as Stephen Hawking said, when you complain, nobody wants to help you. There are many things in your life that you have every reason to complain about. You have every reason to be upset by the things that have happened to you. The most sinister thing about excuses is they're valid. There's a million reasons why you should be able to give up. There's a million reasons why you shouldn't need to try. That thing that broke you, you should be allowed to just sit on the ground. And here's the thing, that's your right. You have every reason to do it. And maybe people won't even think less of you. But here's the truth. You either become weaker or stronger in the places that broke, and that's a choice of how you react moving forward. The great news is, the best thing that you could do to become stronger is love yourself. And as Kamal Ravi Kant said, loving yourself is a practice. People think that it's something that's gonna feel right, that it's gonna feel natural, that you're just gonna turn inward and there it is, the spark of love and joy for yourself, inside yourself. But the truth is that's just not the human experience. That's not the way that it works. There's gonna be a voice inside your head and it's going to blame you. 
It's gonna say that it's your fault. And no matter how many times people on the outside tell you that that is not true, that this thing happened to you, that it isn't you, it doesn't define you, there will be a voice that's going to tell you that it does. And that's where you have to fall back on process. That's where you have to realize that you literally have to practice loving yourself and that it's okay that no matter what happened, there is absolutely nothing that invalidates that you're worthy of your own love. But you've got to practice it. You've got to be willing to do it. You've got to be willing to put in the reps. You've got to know that it's not going to feel right, but you've got to know on the other side of that is a vision of your life where you actually do love yourself because you took the time to say it. You took the time to practice it. You took the time to sit there and feel stupid and say that you love yourself. And sometimes just putting in the work is what you need to do to get strong. So put in the work.